In this video, we will cover the following points. The different tiers of DMR, features it has, which analog FM doesn't have, how DMR works, color codes, and talk groups. DMR is a digital voice standard for two-way radio. Because it is a standard, it means that many manufacturers make DMR radios that should interoperate with each other. DMR is often incorrectly referred to as Moto Turbo. Moto Turbo is actually Motorola's range of DMR product, which of course use the DMR standard. Other common digital voice standards include P25, Tetra, NXDN and DPMR. DMR has three tiers ranging from license-free low power handhelds that work back-to-back -back only, all the way up to wide area trunking networks. In this video we will discuss only tier 2, which is the tier of DMR that's most commonly used in business and amateur systems. Tier 2 DMR has no power limit and works in simplex mode as well as conventional repeater mode. Conventional meaning not trunked. In this video I will assume you already have a basic understanding of how FM two-way radio works. DMR is very comparable to narrow FM. It uses the same bandwidth channels, can use the same repeater offsets, and is primarily used for conveying voice. This is not a coincidence. Tier 2 DMR was designed so it could be used as a replacement for narrow FM repeaters. This means that you can connect a new DMR repeater to the same antenna and cavities as the old repeater and not have to change the frequencies on your license. Although DMR is similar to FM in some ways, it is also a lot more advanced. As well as being used for voice, it can transfer data such as telemetry, GPS data and text messages between radios. DMR also has some other supplementary services such as Radio Stun and Revive which deactivate the radio and can reactivate it again in case the radio is lost or stolen, Radio Check which checks if a radio is on the channel and in range, remote monitor which allows you to listen into another radio, and call alert which causes the called radio to sound an alert tone and show on screen who has called them. DMR is a digital voice standard. This means instead of modulating a carrier with your voice, it modulates the carrier with digital data containing your voice. A vocoder is used to convert the voice from a sound wave to a stream of bits that represent the voice. This stream of bits is then used to modulate the carrier. At the other end, the carrier is demodulated and out comes the stream of bits. This is fed into the vocoder again, which converts it back to voice that we can understand. The benefit of using a vocoder is that the voice takes up less data, so instead of requiring one whole 12.5 kHz channel, it might only require half of that to send the voice. This is exactly the case in DMR. It splits a channel into two time slots. This is called TDMA, which stands for Time Division Multiple Access. The channel is split into alternating 30 millisecond slots. If you look at this from the point of view of one radio, it will transmit for 30 milliseconds, and then not transmit for the next 30, and so on. The user doesn't notice this though, because enough of the data that represents his or her voice is compressed into one time slot to be played continuously at the other end. So it takes 60 milliseconds of voice and compresses it to send it in 30 milliseconds. A DMR radio will only listen to traffic on the time slot it is programmed to use on any particular channel. It will ignore traffic on the other time slot. It essentially treats the other time slot as a completely separate channel. The radios using time slots have to be in agreement as to the exact timing of each slot otherwise they would probably overlap when they transmit. When using a repeater, this timing synchronization is provided by the repeater. In simplex mode, however, time slots do not matter because there is no repeater to provide synchronization. You can select either time slot on your radio on simplex channels and still hear other users on both time slots. 
As well as using time slots, DMR radios use these things called colour codes. It's not as complicated as it sounds, and actually has nothing to do with colour. Colour codes are simply a way of filtering out any other DMR traffic. A radio or repeater will only listen for and decode traffic that has the same colour code it has been programmed for. Any radio traffic with a different colour code will be completely ignored. This is similar to CTCSS and DCS on Analog FM. The purpose of colour codes is so that multiple repeaters or radio systems can be set up on one channel in different areas and users will not accidentally transmit into another business's repeater if they enter its coverage area. Another piece of information needed by a DMR radio is the talk group. Any user who calls on the channel will usually be talking on a talk group, or a group for short. If they're not talking on a group, then they'll be making a private call to a specific radio or an all call to all users on the system. All calls are usually not used in routine operations. Private calls are made possible by radio IDs. Each radio on a system should have a unique ID, which is programmed into the radio. When another user wants to make a private call, they will either input the radio ID they want to call, or select them from a contact list, just like on a phone. On any time slot there can be many talk groups in use, but only one can be in use at any one time. I will now show you an example of a possible radio configuration in a small city to show you how talk groups, time slots and colour codes could be set up. Slot 1, group 1 may be parking wardens. The radio system installer may choose to dedicate one time slot just to parking wardens because they talk a lot on the radio. On time slot 2 there may be groups 1 and 2 used for street cleaners and pest control. Only one of these groups could use the time slot at any one time, but they would not hear irrelevant radio traffic because their radios would only pass on traffic directed at their group. The system installer may decide that these two can share a time slot because neither of them spend a lot of time talking on the radio, so it's unlikely that they will want to speak at the same time. On top of that, their radio traffic will probably not be urgent, so it does not matter if they have to wait for another group to finish talking. This system would also have a colour code which all the radios and the repeater would be set to. I have covered the basics of DMR in this video. There are some more complicated features of DMR that were not covered, but this video should have provided enough information to get you up and running with DMR. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you could click the thumbs up button and leave any feedback in the comments.